Tonight, we begin a new series, Afghanistan, What's Next? It comes as the country is top of mind with the killing just last week of Osama bin Laden just over the border in Pakistan. And with the date for Canada's withdrawal from combat this July fast approaching. Over the next few weeks, we'll take you inside three main facets of life in Afghanistan. Canada's role, what Canadian forces have accomplished in almost 10 years, what they leave behind and the complexity in getting out. The future of the Afghan people, how they'll move forward on their own, take control of their broken country and establish security and human rights. And the harsh reality, the insecurity and terror which still reigns across Afghanistan, even after a decade of U.S. and NATO missions. That's where Susan Ormiston begins our series tonight, with a look at the toll this war has taken and continues to take on civilians. That's, that's a fragment, that's, that's shrapnel. That's from an F-1 Russian grenade. Dave, a Canadian living in Kabul, nearly died this winter. Well, that will kill you. That there broke my ribs when it hit my side. It broke two of my ribs and ended up inside my upper abdominal. Right now he runs a guest house and, and a security uh, consulting well, business and day. doesn't want his last you know, name used. High above Kabul, Dave shows us where insurgents have launched attacks. That was a UN guest house. If you recall back in 2009, October, it was very bad. Lost, uh, I lost a couple friends in that one, uh, uh, unfortunately. A few uh, months back, the Taliban almost got him. It was an ordinary day and a simple trip to get groceries. I was invited out to, uh, to pick up a friend of mine. She asked me if she could make a, a dim sum dinner for us. I, I picked her up in her, in her house and we drove straight to Finest. A supermarket in an affluent part of central Kabul, popular with Westerners and well-off Afghans. Didn't see anything, you know, out of, out of normal. The Lady June, she came in with, with me and uh, we made our way right upstairs. Um, started looking around and I said, okay, we'll just go downstairs to the freezer and pick up your, your frozen goods. She saw something hit the ground, two objects bouncing on the floor. She didn't know what they were. One of the grenades went off. And I looked and I saw a little bit of flash. Then I felt something sharp hit me. That was the second explosion and I could see somebody shooting at me. And as we were all moving to the rear, I was the last person there, he detonated. He blew himself up. But a lot of the structure from the ceilings, the walls, the showcase started falling on top of us. Dave narrowly escaped. His friend was injured. You can see him here trying to help her. She was obviously in pain and she was scared. Eight people didn't get out alive. Others were badly injured. The Taliban claimed responsibility. Even in a city used to cleaning up after violence, this brazen attack was a new law. Afghan forces have taken over security for this city, but they're still taunted by insurgents who smuggle in weapons and suicide bombers. They're aiming at so-called soft targets, stores, hotels, government offices, NGOs, all on high alert. Caught in the middle are Afghans and foreigners. They were shooting national staff members on the floor inside the finest. I talked to two of them inside the same hospital ward as I that night. They, they were asking me, why was, why was this guy shooting me while I was on the floor? Why is he shooting us? We're Afghan. The finest market bombing happened on a Friday, a prayer day. I love my son. I loved my son. Mabuba, Okokmal, and her five sons were also drawn into the horror. Her youngest son, Ali, translates for us. And watching TV, and I saw uh, the bad news on TV that uh, there is an explosion. I saw that uh, the bodies who were killed and injured were 
um, uh, were shifting to the hospitals. And that time, it, I couldn't recognize my son there. He was my elder son. On that day, uh, her eldest was, son, uh, Masood, Masood, his wife, Hamida, and their four children, she was, uh, aged 3 to 15, uh, had gone shopping. How did you find out that it was your family? They had to uh, search uh, the hospitals and they fa found uh, him, uh, his dead body with uh, his wife's dead body along with their, uh, their two children. Their other two kids were found dead too. They all were died and uh, they were really brutally killed. I can't imagine you hearing that news. My mind uh, st uh, stopped working and I couldn't even think of uh, these things. My body was not working properly. You were shocked. Yeah, she was shocked. What were they doing at the grocery store? It was the birthday of her, his daughter. His daughter's birthday? Yes. That day? And they were going to get something for her birthday. They were going to buy something from the grocery store to make a good dinner for the birthday, I think. I imagine, because I was not there. The tragedy sent a shudder through Kabul. Mabuba was a minister of women's affairs, and her son and daughter-in-law, Hamidi Barmaki, were a prominent family. For Ali, married last year, his oldest brother was a father figure. He's my brother. Uh, he was a doctor. Mm -hmm. And uh, she is my sister-in-law, who was a professor of law. and. Uh, she was also a commissioner of human rights. She is the oldest daughter of my brother. The daughters the were trilingual, one. with a bright she future. the youngest one. The littlest one, a boy, was just three and a half. Not only they killed two well-known and educated uh, persons of uh, Afghanistan, they even uh, killed the humanity. They uh, shoot it on three and a half years old son. They shot him by, by pistol. They shot uh, on his head from behind. Are you angry? Yes, very angry. Ali and his mother think Hamidi may have been a target. Because of her human rights work, she had been threatened before. Now they don't feel safe. Even uh, we are scaring nowadays. You're scared? Yes, I'm really scared. Now I'm afraid that, that uh, any other uh, son of mine, the same incident happened to them. Afghans are tiring of the terror. Civilian deaths have gone up tenfold since 2006. It's indiscriminate killing, and it's made parts of Kabul a fortress. Do I feel worried every time I leave this gate? You betcha. You look around the place, everybody has standoff distance, walls, guards, bunkers, safe havens. You have to have it. You will not survive if you don't have it. And that is a sad affair. Do you think it's getting any better? No. no. It is tradition to grieve with friends and family at a memorial feast once a week for 40 days. The family, wiped out at finest market, was a promising part of Afghanistan's future. It's particularly tragic to know that this war is killing them. And for the family, heartbreaking. You must miss them so much. Yes. Yes, always I think about them. What I, I do about their home, what I do about their clothes, what I do about their books. Two day and uh, night I think about the, my son, about my daughter-in-law and about more their children. But I, I cannot do something. Susan Ormiston, CBC News, Kabul. Afghanistan.